All right, so I'll share my screen and show you our Moodle page for one of the courses that we're helping out. So it's called uh, Biomedical Laboratory Technology. And we've created uh, seven different modules in there. And what we're gonna look at today is the first module, bonding, atoms, ions, and bonds. So in there, as we've described earlier on, we have a pre-lesson quiz. So those are three My Daylight questions. After that, we have a uh, interactive video, the class notes on a Word document file, and then three other My Daylight questions to test out your knowledge. So I wanna start by showing you what My Daylight looks like. So in Moodle, you simply click on it, it will bring you to the question. So as I said, the question is embedded inside your Moodle page, so you don't even need to leave that platform. So here we have a chemistry question. I know everybody's interested in chemistry, so we'll go forward. This question says, what species is represented by the following information, proton 47, neutron 62, and electron 46. And here you have multiple choice. So, so far, it looks like any normal question with a multiple choice. Um, but the difference is once I've chosen one of the options, so let's say I choose D, I need to write an explanation, which we've called a rationale in my daylight. So I'm just gonna write a little something, a little explanation, blah, blah, blah. I write down and then I click on next. And here comes the difference between my daylight and the other platform that once I've clicked on this, it recaps. It says, here was your question. Here was the uh, answer choice. And you chose, you chose D. And the reason why you chose D is you, you wrote this down. Well, let's look at what other people in the world that have chose answer D wrote as their explanation. And let's see what other people in the world that chose actually A wrote as their uh, explanation. And then the students asked to read all of these, these read these rationals, and then re-vote to see if he or she got convinced otherwise to change their answer from D to A. And if they did, why, why is that? So let's say I change my answer to A now and I click for this explanation, then I submit my answer. I have this, this what we call a synchronous process of, of peer instruction. Even though my classmates were not beside me to discuss these answers, I was able to read what my peers have written not necessarily at the same time, but uh, at another time. So this, this platform tries to mimic the, the kind of team-based uh, problem solving that you could have in class, but mimics it outside of class. So in the end, yes, answer A was correct. And this is the expert rationale. So the uh, rationale provided by uh, uh, an expert, so a, a teacher. So this is one of the questions that a student would do. That student would do three of those uh, before uh, looking at the video. So students would get three of them, would know if he or she got the, the answers right or wrong, and then would move on to the video. To move on to the video, we're using H5P, and I'll let uh, Carmen tell you a bit more about that. So I'll stop sharing my screen and give the control to Carmen. Okay, so if we click on the interactive video, we should then um, see, there we go. So you'll recognize the YouTube icon. Uh, so you can click here to start the video, uh, but I'll start down here. Uh, there's little circles down at the bottom. Those are bookmarks, so students can always come back uh, and review some of the questions or some of the content that they see in the video. Uh, the nice thing too is that when a student cannot finish watching the whole video, uh, Moodle will remember where they left off so they can come back and continue um, with, with uh, the rest of the the module. So if we just press, press play. In this module, we will look at atoms, ions, and bonds. So this is a nice feature that it allows um, students to move forward in the video. So in this case, perhaps some students find that the atoms is, you know, they already know what atoms are, so, but they would like a refresher on the ions or just on the bonds. So you can click up here I've set it up so that they can move forward to ions. Let's have a look at ions. Elements that do not have gold valence shells are reactive. So these are the atoms will gain my um, electrons PowerPoint electrons slides. In order to fill the valence shells and become stable. And the narration, um, the narration was recorded with PowerPoint, right? Uh, and so there's animation. You can use laser pointers in there as well. Um, and I'll show you moving forward, we can go to, so here the video, if we had watched it just before, and I'll just show you here. Electrons. So here the video pauses, right? I didn't do anything, it paused on its own. Um, and so they're presented with a question. This is a simple multiple choice question. Um, and so they can 
provide their answer here. So choose your answer. Let's just say, um, and, and the nice thing about H5P is you see how in the background that the answer to A is potassium or K and then B is calcium 2 plus. Uh, but H5P will actually randomize the answers. So, you know, uh, so that's, it, it kind of provides variety. Uh, and so you can also design it so that, you know, if they pick an answer and it's the incorrect answer, right, you can provide feedback. So there's a learning moment there. Uh, in this case here, right, let's just say they want to retry it again. They can retry it. Let's just say, oh, well, um, I think it is Celsius ion, right? Oh, no, it's wrong. Okay, I'm going to try it again. So now I think the answer should be uh, potassium. Check. Correct, right? Again, feedback given, and they get points for that. And then they can continue. Um, and then uh, another type of question that you can uh, present to students is something called the drag and drop. So here, the students have to fill in this table. So it says, uh, provide your answer here. So I click here. And then this text box opens up. It's the exact same question. Now it says fill in this, this table by dragging and dropping numbers, right? So uh, I can put this here. So, you know, oops. There, there. So, you know, you, you just, that's another type of question that you can ask. You can do a check. Oh. It tells me I only got one right, the rest is wrong. Let's try this again, right? And so the students can keep doing um, doing this question until they get it right. Or if they just want to move on, they can. I've set it up so that they can um, continue moving on and come back to this at another time if they want. So that's another type of question. Uh, you can also include links. So in so in this part of the video, we uh, referred the students to a tutorial online. Uh, and so if they click on this, right, it's an active link and that can take them to something else. Right? Uh, and so that's for the tutorial. Um, and then just at the very end, let me show you here. Again, just another type of question uh, that we design. We click on this, and it's another type of drag and drop. You know, we're just you sort of uh, categorize these compounds into the two types, and then you can do a check. Oh, some of them are right, some of them are wrong. I can retry. Okay, so the students can practice until they get it right. Uh, and then the nice thing is at the end, H5P actually gives a summary of how the students did uh, on the on their questions. Like, are the questions embedded? Uh, are they, uh, my impression is they're mostly formative. Um, that is to say that there's no grade recorded. The, the students just do them until uh, they get them right and they confidently move on. Is that the... That's the case. My other question, which I noticed, is that the um, that the uh, H five P questions seem to be tailored with the my daylight questions. <laughs> is that is that the case? Is that a deliberate? Is that a feature of? Um, yeah. So for H five P, it's uh, we the idea is to use it uh, for um, formative uh, assessments, not for summative assessments. Right, and so it is just it, it it's to provide practice for the students. Mm. So the summative part of the assessments would be would be presented through the my daylight questions, and the way that we chose the questions for my daylight, it, we wanted to reflect the questions that we chose uh, in the H five P video. In a way that, uh, as we said before, those were um, pre lesson quiz. So we wanted to make sure if they were able to answer these questions before watching the video. Well, good. I mean, if if not, they've watched the video and they get a similar question. So that's why the question was uh, similar. Mm -hmm. But uh, but again, a different process. In um, in what by watching the video, you are just trying out the multiple choice by uh, answering it them into my daylight. You need to provide an explanation and you need to read other people's explanation before you continue. So same question, but ask through two different platforms and ask through two different means. Mm 